everyone, I'm Jared. Hey guys, I'm Dave. Dave, and we're here today to honor one of our fallen uh, drum eels, Chuck Silverman. Chuck mm -hmm. passed away a couple weeks ago unexpectedly at a very young age, mm -hmm. like 62 years old. And he had been teaching on drum eel for a long time. And he had a, quite a real close following of students here and um, a lot of like really kind of cool footage. And so we thought, why don't we put together a, a video, a tribute to Chuck, just to kind of uh, give to the community as a way of remembering him and what he's done for the drum community. Now you have some notes of some of his popular books and stuff that he's Yeah, out. yeah, and, and just to let everybody know, welcome here um, for all you guys who have been watching Chuck through Dromeo and have seen his books and everything like that. What we're doing today is celebrating his life and giving him uh, an honor for all the stuff that he's done, not only on Dromeo, but also throughout his, his life there. So if you, anybody has anything they want to share, yeah. any kind of stories or memories that they have, positive experiences, funny experiences from Chuck, please enter them in the submit a question below, and we're going to read them all because this is all about honoring uh, Chuck Silverman and all he did through Dromeo and in his, in his life in, in the, the drumming community. Yeah. So, And if you are watching this after the lesson, after the live broadcast is over, please just still leave your comments below um, for others to read them, um, your stories about Chuck, what you, what you learned most from him, what you like most about him. Yeah, yeah, and, and a lot, a lot of you guys who are just Dromeo people here, they, you might only know him from Dromeo, but Chuck's been uh, drumming, performing, teaching, doing clinics his whole life. Uh, some of his popular books, you know, the Latin Funk Connection. Uh, he's been in Modern Drummer many times. He's just such an incredible drummer. He had such a cool personality. I know personally when we were working with him, I worked really closely with him on a one-on-one -on -one basis, setting him up for the live lessons and satellite instructor and all that. And he always made me laugh. He was such a funny guy. I know Victor. We. Uh, was working with him too in order to set up all the cameras and everything like that and the online stuff and it was just uh, um, frustrating at times because he wasn't the best tech savvy guy but he was always such a positive guy to work with always made us laugh even in the most stressful and uh, frustrating situations when we're trying to get the tech side down but uh, he's such a funny guy and uh, uh, really cool really cool dude so it's a really good time right now just to remember him and uh, he also had Keepers of the Flame which is a documentary he was working on um, a fundraiser and uh, that's something that that uh, he was working on actually quite a bit in the last couple of months, the last later stages of his life. So um, if anybody has anything to share and you'd want me to read it out loud or Jared to read it out loud, please just send, uh, send it in the submit a question and we'll definitely get to it. Mm -hmm. I remember Mike Michalko gave me a VHS tape of oh, Chuck yeah. Silverman a long time ago, and that's when I was first exposed to his teaching. And I remember one comment he made during uh, the, the actual video, and it was, uh, if you if you're 10 minutes, he's talking about being a drummer, a professional drummer. Yeah, yeah. If you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. And I might not get this correct, so don't hold me to it. But if you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. If, it's, if you're five minutes early, you're, you're late. late. Yeah. If you're on time, you're fired. Yeah. And so <laughs> I've always, I always use that when I, uh, when I talk to drummers now, so. Absolutely. Well, let's just start things out. We've got a couple of clips that we've taken just from the lessons that Chuck has done through Drumeo. Now, we started with him about a year and a bit ago now, and uh, we contacted him. Actually, I think it was through Mike Michalko gave us his contact and said this would be a great guy to work with. And uh, um, he st joined as a satellite member for Drumeo, like I said, about a year and a half ago, and he focused a lot on funk. He was one of our funk instructors. He did some Latin stuff as well. Those are his two specialties. But we had what we called Funk Fridays here on Drumeo. And if you guys are watching, and you're an edge member and you haven't checked those out, he's got a ton of lessons in Drumeo just on funk and stuff. And it was yeah. such a cool thing to be able to get that last little bit of, uh, of information from Chuck. Because one thing when he came online, he says, I got a lot of stuff to share and uh, I need an outlet to share it. And he's got all these books and all that, but throughout his whole life, he gained so much experience, he just wanted to share it. And we were lucky to have him be able to do that through Drumeo. So let's throw a couple of clips. Here's uh, just a little bit of an introduction of who Chuck was in case you haven't seen him.
Once again, thank you so much for being here. It's really an honor uh, to be with Drumio, Drum Education Online. Just figured that out. Thanks a lot for being here again at Dromeo. That's the romantic way to say this. Um, most of you, well, some of you may know me for um, all the, the things I've done with regards to, uh, to Latin music, <clears throat> which has been a very large part of my life uh, ever since um, I was about 24 years old. And hopefully we'll be looking into some of that uh, material as we go along here uh, with Drumio. Come on, everybody, sing along with me now. Vamos pa el monte, pa el monte la guacha. Vamos pa el monte, pa el monte me gusta más. Okay, anyway, sorry, just get carried away. But uh, before I got into Latin music, of course, I was a rock player. One of my favorite drummers, Barry Moore Barlow. <clears throat> Do you know who he played with? Jethro Tull. That's right. So, um, let's see. Oh, I guess I could reload this. Um, and then I was very fortunate, uh, growing up in Miami, I got uh, involved with um, some really good uh, funk musicians was playing in a band called Benny Lattimore and the Kinfolk. And, uh, hold on one second. Okay. All right. So, I really got into, I really got into James Brown uh, big time. And some of you may have the book that I wrote um, called The Funk Masters, The Great Rhythm Sections of the James Brown Band. I started playing when I was 12. <clears throat> um, I started playing drum set when I was 15. But next year will be 50 years that I, first time I picked up a, a pair of sticks. And I have my practice pad from, from seventh grade. It's out in my, in my garage. I'll bring it in. I have a lot to share and I'm very happy you know, to be able to do it. It's, it's a, this is a great thing. Drumio is a it's an awesome service, you know, for the community. So thanks to Jared and Dave and Victor and everybody at Drumio for making this happen. Okay, um, I'm going to sign off. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Okay, uh, I'm going to look here. Okay, so later, guys. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. So that, was, now, that was one funny thing about Chuck. Every time he ended his lessons, it didn't matter how many times he had done it, and he has quite a few lessons in drumming, but he always never figured out exactly how to end the lessons with the, without, without any issues. But uh, that was one of the funniest things and one of the reasons why his lessons were so humorous, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or he would, end, he would end it like five times. Because he'd end it, and then he'd like <laughs> look at the chat and then start talking to people. He'd never want to end it. I, I swear, if we... If he could sit there all day, he would have sat there all day and just like chatted with people and laughed. There are times where he asked if, uh, if he can go later or why do I have to end in an hour? So. <laughs> it's like, Jack, it's like, you can't do two hour yeah. lessons. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way, but uh, um, you have some, cool. uh, some yeah. feedback or some stories? And uh, this one's from Fiblu. It says, greetings to all. Chuck Silverman in memoriam. Thank you very much for your valuable information provided by the many of, interesting, many of your interesting lessons. It was always a pleasure and an honor to listen to you, and now it's hard to believe that you have passed away. Rest in peace, peace for your soul. Mm -hmm. um, it's from Hel he's a uh, is from Helsinki, Finland. So it's Very amazing cool. how far some of uh, his lessons have reached. Yeah, absolutely. Bring in the funk worldwide. And he always would uh, uh, ask too online, he's like, where are you from? And then he'd always have a story because he toured so much and, and did so many clinics uh, around the world. He always had a story from wherever you were from and you couldn't really stump him that way. Um, so and Holland, I think, was one of his favorite countries. I know a couple of our members are, are from around there. He always had stories about, about, yeah. about every place that people have been. So it was really cool. Yeah. 
Uh, this one's from Captain Bob. Captain Bob's actually from Alaska. So we're going from, what's Finland, Finland and Alaska, are they? Yeah, I think maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think, he says, I think I speak for all of us when I say, thank you, Dramio, for allowing us to share in Chuck's talents and become closer than we uh, would have without your connection. All of our instructors are so much more than just instructors. So thank you from all of us. Chuck will be missed so much. I agree. And if you guys have any other memories or stories, we'd just love for uh, uh, we'd love to read them out loud. Like I said, yeah. this is just to honor Chuck and to to uh, share with him or with your guys' uh, your experiences with Chuck. Um, but one thing that was really cool about uh, about Chuck is, like I was telling before, I always made you laugh. And whenever he would do his lessons, because we can't run audio for the actual songs that he was teaching, he would sing them quite a bit. And um, it was always quite funny when he would start explaining something and then he would start to sing the, the parts of the song and he'd always have a good laugh at himself he, he just didn't really care and it was always a lot of fun so check this little clip out uh, with just a couple of, of excerpts from his lessons where he would sing the parts of the song that he was playing check it out so now let me take you through I was almost going to sing a Beatles tune let me take you down cause I'm going to but I, I won't never mind okay you know, we could do like, is there, are there lessons on here about like singing and drumming? Hmm. Oh, Jared. Okay. I already sang Me Gusta La Gasolina. I don't know if I've already sang that for you guys, you know, the reggaeton song. Do you know that song? <clears throat> Gil, Steve, Me Gusta La Gasolina. Okay, never mind. So, letter B. Let's all sing it together. Two, three. Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. No? Okay. If Jared is here, you know, this will be my last lesson. <clears throat> I actually, we should be doing like a feeling, happy feeling. Of course, man. That's some bad uh, music right there. That's great. Sweet, 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 sweet Caroline. <laughs> I'm having too much fun again. Stop me. Okay. Count it up. A one. Now we're talking. April's here. Okay. Okay, now. All right. And Sean is here. One, two, three. And now, I've calmed down. You know that song, Love Potion Number Nine? Love Potion Number Nine. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, listen. Okay, what song is this? All right, look, we're having a little bit of fun. What song is this? Are you ready? You can't, you can't hear me sing. Okay, I'll hit the cowboy really light. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Anybody know? I'm having too much fun. Who? Rocksteady. <laughs> Sorry. This is too awesome, man. I could do this forever. Well, you know, not forever, but.
a lot of fun when he taught. He did the whole, whenever a member would come on, he would do the, oh, April's here, and he would do a little <laughs> jam. Um, here's a little uh, excerpt. This is from Jonathan Gilman, or as everybody here probably knows him as G4. And uh, Jonathan actually was really close with Chuck and, and did a lot of his lessons, and uh, he was a, a funk drummer himself. So he gravitated to Chuck quite a bit, and he was um, quite impacted when, when Chuck passed away. So he did a video a tribute for him for um, uh, Earth, Wind & Fire song, Get Away. So if you guys want, go check that out in the forums. But he just says, that this video is to pay homage to a good man, a great instructor, and a fellow drummer, Chuck Silverman. Chuck was an instructor with Drumio and an on Online, and the Online Drumming Institute. Um, uh, he says, Chuck focused mainly on lessons dealing with funk drumming. One of the lessons he taught was learning to play the song Get Away by one of the premier funk bands of the 70s and 80s, Earth, Wind and Fire. Although I knew how to play the song somewhat, this lesson helped me tremendously. I know this is a song not as played, uh, not as played as well as Chuck, but I would hope that it'd make him proud if nothing else. Have a smile on his face uh, while he pats his feet. Um, I would have said some words in the video, but I know I would have lost it. So I hope this video does some justice. R.I.P. Chuck. And like I said, he did a full uh, uh, version of, of, of the song in tribute to Chuck. So it was very nice. cool. And you guys can check that out in the forums. He posted it on Facebook as well. But um, he wanted me to share that with you guys. So cool. This one's uh, from Fabian Feld. Uh, it says, it was 1996 or 97 when I contacted Chuck through mail. I was so... Um, Thrilled, and internet was so new I couldn't believe it. And Chuck and I called Chuck immediately through regular phone line. Since then, we have been in contact, and he was very interested in my new percussion project, Pro oh, sorry, Proyecto Afro Purano. Sorry if I got that wrong. He was an amazing drummer and a guy, and yes, I miss really miss him. Regards from Argentina. So, very cool. Thank you very much. Sorry if I butchered those names. Um, one from uh, Mark Volker, thanks guys for setting this tribute up. I know Chuck would have loved it. Great lessons, great teacher, and uh, great person. I agree. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, that's just a bit um, this one's from Roman. It says, joined Drumio three months ago, and I have learned so much from Chuck, the funk master. I had a lesson the day before uh, he died, and I couldn't believe he died. He really enjoyed sharing his vast drum knowledge with us. Thank you so much, Chuck. Rest in peace. Yeah, we have, there's actually a full, he did a full series on funk, and it, was, it went funk essentials 1 to 10, and, and there was just so much in that 10, uh, 10 series. It's around 10 hours long in Drumio. And like I said before, it's just such a cool thing that we got to capture the last little pieces of, of what was in Chuck's mind and the, the experiences that he had. So um, the funk essentials 1 to 10 were just awesome. Yeah. Um, but like I said, he, he was one of those instructors that was different than everybody else. And that's the cool thing about drummers. We have so many different instructors here with different flavors, but Chuck was really unique. I mean, he was um, really slow at talking, but that was a good thing. He kept things uh, um, very clear and it was really relaxed. Uh, whereas, um, uh, you know, depending on who, who you get, it's, it's always a different feel, but Chuck always had a really relaxed uh, uh, approach to it. And wherever, you know, however new you were to drumming, you would always be able to go in there and just feel welcome and feel comfortable. Yeah. So it was a really cool thing about yeah, it. Yeah, with, with online lessons, obviously if it's, one to many, and the one can't see the many. It's always disconnected. It's different than than a private lesson, obviously. Uh, but he would always do a really, really good job at making you feel like he was talking to you directly. Mm -hmm. And when he looked in that camera and started talking, like even when he said, uh, "Oh, Jared's here. It's gonna be my last lesson." Like it's weird to hear him say that because <laughs> you really feel like like uh, like he's talking directly to you. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty cool. One other thing I'll say is uh, he was always so um, eager to make things work. I know sometimes, like, he had a really busy schedule. He worked uh, Monday to Friday at uh, MIT, the Music Institute, mm -hmm. um, and he always wanted to find time for Dromeo. And there was uh, just recently, actually, right before uh, he passed away, we had to change his lesson time. He had Funk Fridays, but we had to change it to uh, Thursday slot. And um, I thought it was going to be, you know, uh, quite difficult to find a time that worked for him. But he literally said any time of the day, and we had 
have instru or, uh, members from around the world. So he even recommended, why don't I try a late night, 9, 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. start time? And he had absolutely no problem doing that. He said, I'd love to come home from MIT uh, and then do drum meal right afterwards. I'm like, are you sure, man? That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of work. But he says, no, absolutely. It's, he, he loved teaching so much. He loved doing it. He loved the interaction. He loved chatting with the members. He became close with a lot of the members, and he uh, he made it work, right? So we went from Friday to, to Thursday at 9 p.m. and uh, that's a long day for him. But he was just always so eager to make it work. So it was really cool. He was an awesome, awesome instructor to work with uh, on the other side of the fence rather than just you know the the, the members. Cool. Okay. But let's go through another clip. Now, we've shown a little bit of the introduction to who Chuck was. We showed his personality style a little bit with uh, his singing and all that. But he was an incredible player. He had such a good feel. His dynamics were so good. Mm -hmm. And he was always such a relaxed drummer. So check out this clip showing a little bit about how Chuck played and what he played. Check it out. Bernard Groove. You guys did the Bernard Groove. Raise your hands. I remember talking to Bernard. I don't know if it was about this... this uh, this song or some other things that he's played on. But uh, I was talking to him about some song and he told me that <laughs> that he, he cut the track with a bucket of fried chicken between his legs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry about the scratching mic. Yes, Victor, I understand. Um, a bucket of fried chicken. Anyway, <laughs> okay. So, um, you got to check out this, the drum solo as well. I'm just going to do this for about 10 minutes. All right, so just hang in there. just thought of something I'm really not playing this slow you know slow would be like much much slower than that I don't know the level of most of you guys I mean Dave told me that everybody on Drumeo is kind of like a Vinny you know clone so uh, but just in case you're not <laughs> you may want to take these really much, much slower than I'm than I'm playing them now. Much slower. One, two, three. Boom, ba.
bit of fun. This is a comment from Jim Jim Jim. It says, I went back as far as I could in the library one day and I saw Sex Machine lesson. By the weekend, that's all I could play. Super fun. Yeah. We will miss Chuck. He did a lot of those song breakdowns, Earth, Wind, and Fire breakdowns, James yeah. Brown breakdowns, and a lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one's from uh, Raffle. Not only up to Finland, also here in the Netherlands. I like the community. It's always hard, it's always hard to lose good people, even if you don't know them personally. Rest in peace and thank you for the hours of material we, the community, can still use to remember you. Singing Let It Be was not his strongest point, <laughs> but it's great to see a person enjoying this much uh, of music. And that's the, that's the truth. Uh, he loved just music and teaching in general. So, One of the cool quotes I saw on Facebook by a couple people too, they were saying, heaven just got a whole lot funkier. Yeah. I think that was pretty fun, pretty yeah. funny. Uh, this one's from Dave Warfel. I've been... I've been waiting to get into Chuck's lessons. I always felt I couldn't play what he was teaching. I keep practicing other things to get better so I can do Chuck's lessons. I'm looking forward to learning his stuff in the future. It's cool. It'll be there for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one from the forums, Nicholas M. says, I feel blessed to have been able to learn from this man. Always made me laugh. Such a young soul and great drummer. My condolences to his uh, family, friends, and the Drumio team who had the pleasure of working with him in person. This is a sad day, but his funky beats will live on. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of members that, uh, well, not a lot, but there's a few members that would ac have actually met him before yeah. at uh, PASIC. I think last year, I think KC was one of them. Um, uh, but they actually got to meet him and do a live clinic with them. And he's probably, if you guys uh, have gone to a lot of clinics, he might have gone to a clinic that he did because he was a huge clinician. He was yeah. flying around the world. I remember a lot of times uh, he would have to take a, a Friday off from Drumyo because he was either going to Italy or something like that to do a clinic. So he's always all over the place, uh, especially working with his um, documentary there, Keepers of the flame so yeah. uh, do you have another uh yeah, let's we uh, can go to the next clip yeah. so uh, like if we've shown some playing now he was also really uh, uh f like i said full of wisdom and full of advice so here's a little clip of him giving some useful and practical advice on his lessons check it out like what i try to do personally is i don't want to sound cliche as you know but i really try and play for the music um depending on the style uh, I can be, I can play very aggressively or I could play with brushes and not very aggressively. I can play a really decent ballad, you know, brush ballad, and I can play some very aggressive music. And I'm always trying to really be a team player, you know, and not show the latest groups of seven thing that I've come up with, you know. So that's what I think happens is that, you know, a lot of, you know, or I'll just speak personally. You, you, I work on things here, but I don't want to bring them into the gig, you know, unless there's a musical reason for doing so. You know, what, what I try to tell my students, and I'm, I'm telling this to you guys too, is it, it's all about people wanting to play with you. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with your personality as well. Now, if you're buddy, you know, and you're rather acerbic, 
but you're the greatest drummer in the world, then you could be a total whatever and, and you're Buddy Rich, you know? <clears throat> but many of us are not Buddy Rich, so I, I try to be uh, a, a really good person um, on a gig. Uh, not only on the bandstand, listening to people playing, listening to what the bass player is playing, listening to the vocalist really being a part of the of the band, but on a break, you know, you know, really listening to people. People have things to say, uh, you know, not 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 taking over the conversation, but being part of it. So people think, wow, man, he's like really listening. He listens on stage. He listens on on the break. You know, I, I, I want to have this guy, you know, playing with us. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a social thing and on the bandstand and, and off, you know? You know, it's kind of like a mantra of mine, which is <clears throat> let's take these rhythms and do other things with them, not just keep it in the okay, we're studying this kind of Brazilian stuff, but not just keep it in the Brazilian feel, but use it in other fields. You could you could think of it in, in a jazz feel. I borrowed the rhythm, and now I'm using it. There's so many other ways. And, and if you cannot do it at this tempo, you've heard this, you must have heard this on Drumeo. You must slow it down. I remember, well, I remember, it, it was today. I was at the Musicians Institute, where I teach. And what were we learning? Uh, yeah, we were learning a Jaw Stone tune that has a little Latin thing in it. It's a song called Arms of My Baby. And one of my students is trying to play this kind of mambo-ish type of rhythm, right? And uh, he didn't get it. He tried it again. Same exact tempo. Didn't get it. Same exact tempo. He tried it again. Didn't get it. And after four or five times, I, I stopped him. And I said the obvious thing. You're not playing it correctly. You must play it at a slow enough tempo to where you're doing it correctly right away. It might be extremely slow, but you've got to find as soon as possible the tempo where you, where you can um, process this information that's on your handout here that's on the, the, the PDF. You follow what I'm saying? You're processing. Okay, hi-hat, ghost note, accent note, hi-hat and bass drum, hi-hat by itself on beat two. That's one, two, three, four absolutely different things in a row and that's the way the whole beat goes almost with different things happening every 16th note and you're having to process wait a second hi-hat oh ghost note accent bass drum and hi-hat hi-hat by itself follow me beat two accent on the e bass drum on the and by itself hi-hat that's a lot you must learn how to learn. 
it's key. It's an absolute key. And that is my job here, is to teach you how to learn. And one way to do it, if you can't do it correctly, do not keep on playing it incorrectly because you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Okay? So. That's a good information. Big time, yeah. In there. Um, sure, I'm sure the community has gotten just a ton of little tips, like little things about even just how you practice, mm -hmm. how you internalize things. Um, that's such a good tip. And the experience you, that he has. Yeah, if you can uh, even just do what he says there as far as like learning something ultra slow, it's like you can learn literally anything. Mm -hmm. Anything. Yep, absolutely agree with that. Um, you have some more... Um, yeah. Uh, something, something might be wrong with the submit a question thing, so I'm going to read some from the forum, that uh, our drum forum in uh, Drumio. Uh, this is from Giuseppe. Totally shocked and saddened by this terrible news. It was an honor to be a, stu a student of Chuck. He'll be missed. My prayers and condolences to his family and friends. Rest in peace. Uh, this one's from Con5150 from the UK. Um, feel really saddened by this news. Like other people have already said, Chuck's lessons were always a whole lot of fun and very educational. A top drummer and a nice guy. Uh, rest in peace, Chuck. Thoughts and prayers are with your family. Um, I've got one here from yeah. Leah T, who uh, submitted this one in the chat. Uh, he said, Chuck's sense of humor was evident. With one lesson, uh, one lesson was a bit crazy, and he declared, this instant decaf, never again. <laughs> he said he's, <laughs> he's proud to be part of Drummy as a teacher, and he truly wanted to bring success to his students. He told us to play the music respectfully and to honor those who, became, uh, who came before us and carry on the tradition of music. Mm -hmm. He spoke to me one lesson to be sure I knew I could get those grooves he was teaching, and he broke it down step by step to help. I will truly miss him. That's from Leah T in the chat. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, something from Ermin Monzen in Toronto. I literally gasped for air when I read about it. I'm deeply sad with a heavy heart. He was an awesome drummer, instructor, and friend to us all. I'll forever watch his archive lessons in a different way. Um, ironically enough, I was working on a funk slash Latin lesson for him to review. It was a simple pattern turned into a groove inspired by him. Mm -hmm. Instead of review, I'll still record it in memorial to him. So, yeah, cool. Uh, one from Daniel J. Jones. Tragic news. My deepest sympathies to his close family and friends. Such a great person. I was lucky enough to have a few chats with him on various topics from time to time, and his pure joy for music was always evident throughout that and his fantastic humor. Uh, Chuck wrote a great book I had long before he joined up to teach at Drumio called The Funk Masters about the James Brown drummers. But after seeing him and hearing him groove so hard, I say he was the funk master. So groove on, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Now, uh, showing you some planks, showing you some of his uh, advice that he gave and, and a little bit of an introduction to Chuck already. But one thing that a couple people are already mentioning in the chat was when you were at a Chuck lesson, it wasn't like he was just teaching a clinic. He was one-on-one -on -one for a lot of times. And one thing that he did a lot of was he would look at the chat and he would try and communicate and uh, um, try and uh, uh, give you kind of, you know, some one-on-one -on -one time type of deal. But he was also very uh, uh, quick to uh, uh, rip on you if you were chatting off topic too. So check out some of Chuck's interaction with some of the members of Drumio here. Here we go. Is this working? I hope it's working. Yes, now it's working. What the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I've learned a lot teaching. And um, hey, that's not nice. 
what happened here? And one thing, um, one thing that I've learned, uh, one of the things that I've learned is never take for granted that your students should do, can, can do what you're asking them to do, you know? I used to do clinics, a lot of clinics in Europe. I've done many, many, many. And uh, I remember, I don't know where I was, but uh, I get kind of hyper, you know, when I, when I do these things. And I, I, was, I went outside with like a bullhorn and started telling people, come to the drum clinic. <laughs> oh my God, wow. I'm going to venture into the chat room. What a bunch of Weisenheimers. What are you guys doing? Hey, let's see what we got here. Hey, we got 13, what's going on? People are leaving. The hell? Cool. How many people we got in here? 17. All right, we need more people. All right, so would you guys, if it's not too cold, would you mind going outside and uh, you know, telling some people to go online and you know log on to Drumeo? What's going on in here? Is there a party? Steve Bato, who's that? Okay. Gentlemen, attenzione. There's Steve Bato. Is it Bato or Beto? It's, they're behaving, I, Mike, I agree. I'm glad I don't look at this chat room. There's Anne, yes. Anne, thanks a lot. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Bay Toe. Oh, Antonio, where are you going, man? Antonio, get back here. What's going on? Antonio, Mr. Weingartner. See, diez estrellas para mí. Mira, tú sabes que socialismo o muerte, pero son igual. Anyway, let's see. Ezekiel's working. Ray's in Colorado. Colorado, awesome. Okay, Pingo. Hun at the Ulschlebler. Hey, I can say Schreveningen. Anyway, I'm going to get back to what I'm supposed to be doing here. Holland, fantastic. Listen, um, Pingo, if you could uh, send me some Stroop waffle, that would be awesome. I don't know where you are in Holland. I've been there many, many times. Holland is a uh, favorite. Uh, Favorite country of mine. Uh, Dave the Wave, okay, are you raising your hand that you worked on this groove? Stop the LOL stuff, okay? I, pay attention. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. You worked on it. You're the man. Mikey. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Didn't he say, no fills? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bubba. I apologize. <laughs> okay. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> you know, I looked at other guys that do their lessons here, and I've seen like five questions, nine questions, you know. I get two questions. What, you know? What am I, chopped liver? And nobody has emailed me. You know, I quit. That's it. Anyway, okay. And do me a favor. Uh, I guess, like, there's a, I can rate, I'm going to rate myself. Please rate the content and teaching style. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Let me see. Five freaking stars. Okay. Thank you. Gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm out. I will be signing out. All right, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, nos vemos pronto. <laughs> and his lessons were actually always highly rated, too. That was so funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he would rate them all himself. <laughs> he had a little army of his own friends and family oh, that read his lessons. That's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh,
I love it when he says, stop the LOLs <laughs> or, or, or the other instructors get five to ten questions. What am I, chop liver? That was good. That just means that he taught it well enough that they didn't have to ask yeah. him questions. So. Uh, a couple more comments and then we have one more clip for you. This is from Larry Rice. We asked for funk lessons here at Drumeo and we got Chuck Silverman. I was skeptical at first, way too white, I thought. <laughs> but after a few lessons with Chuck, it was apparent he wanted to engage with us students and he knew his stuff. He was a real fan of funk and the Afro-Cuban thing, making several trips to Cuba to enjoy uh, the friendship. Food and funk to be had from these authentic players. I'm saddened by his sudden passing, and, and not only will I miss his engaging teaching style and what he brought to Drumio, I'm seriously going to miss his sense of humor and the connection he gave to us, uh, a time long past where drumming history is being made. He made personal connections with us, he remembered us, and we'll remember him. My thoughts are also with his family, his friends, and students who knew him better than we did. I used to joke with him that we are related now, since I married a woman with the maiden name, Silverman. <laughs> he loved uh, music that I love, and I consider him a funk brother-in-law of mine. Uh, awesome. Larry Rice. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, this one's from Robert. It's with great sadness that I learned today the unexpected passing of... of uh, um, drummer, educator, music historian, and keeper of the flame of traditional and contemporary Cuban music, Chuck Silverman. I was fortunate enough to have taken some drumio live lessons with him over the past few months. He was funny, kind, patient, erudite, and thoughtful instructor, and his personal knowledge of Latin, soul, funk, and blues music and drumming will sorely be missed. You're in my heart, Chuck. Uh, thank you. Um, if you guys have any last things to say, this is your last chance. We're going to be showing one last clip of him playing and doing some solo work and all that before we wrap things up. So if you do have anything to say, please get in and out. Yeah. This one's from Ken Mauser. Chuck <clears throat> and his family have been on my mind today since learning of his passing. I never communicated with Chuck, but I always look forward to his lessons. It's amazing how through this thing called the internet, we have truly enlarged our families and people we care about. Chuck would always get tickled at an inside humorous thought, and I would find myself laughing with him. <laughs> His archive lessons will have a whole different feel about them and represent a tre uh, treasure of and, and from Chuck. So that's cool. Thank you guys all for submitting um, yeah. any sort of stories like that. I think that's uh, a really, really good tribute to him. I really appreciate that. It was an honor for us to get to, to have him here in Drumeo, and we are saying goodbye way way too early. Never ever did I expect that we'd have to say goodbye to, to one of our instructors and one of our family members mm -hmm. here. So that's, uh, that's uh, horrible, um, but the funk will live on, as many people have said. He will live on through Drumio and through his books and through the yeah. memories of everybody. Rest in peace, Chuck. I know you're up there, like I said before, heaven has just got a lot more funk here. Yeah. Uh, we're going to miss you a ton here, but man, it's like, um, uh, it just seems like yesterday when we were Skyping for the first time trying to set everything up with your lessons and all that. Um, so we're just honored to be able to have that in Dromeo uh, where you can live on forever. So Yeah. Great. So we have one more clip to share and then uh, that will be the end of the tribute. But like I said, if you are watching this after it's been recorded, feel free to leave your comments right below the video. Uh, mm -hmm. this, vi this video will be on YouTube and it will be available in the Dromeo Edge archive. And so just leave your comments everywhere and we want this just to be a video out there for people to to um, come back to every time they want to remember who Chuck was and his personality and if they ever want to laugh a little bit at some of his jokes. Absolutely. So, cool. All right, so here's the last little clip of Chuck with some more playing segments from uh, his Drumio lessons and all that. Check it out. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. And like Jared said, please post your comments on YouTube and on, on, on Drumio forums about Chuck that you have. Great honor for him. And uh, take care, I guess. Yeah. yeah, see you guys again soon. God. God, those ghost notes were explained to me by another great drummer who we're going to be studying about named Clyde Stubblefield. And uh, I'll tell you right now, and then we'll probably talk about it later in another lesson. But he told me that the backbeat is the steak that you put in the pan. Okay? Actually, he calls it a pork chop, but I'm kosher, so I don't eat, ch I don't eat pork. Um... But anyway, he said it was the pork chop. You put it in the pan, right? And the ghost notes are, is the seasoning that you put on it. You know, a little bit of garlic and some onions and, 
you know, whatever else you're going to put in the pan. But for those of you who are phenomenal cooks, and I know, you know, everybody at Drumeo is a phenomenal cook, put too many spices on the steak, you know, and you're like, I don't want to eat this thing. So the ghost notes cannot detract. Now we're getting into the into the what we would call the shiznit. <clears throat> See, I'm I'm from the ghetto. No, I'm not. But anyway, now we're gonna get into the That's nice, man. You know what I mean? That is really nice. Sing it with me. She's a brick uh, 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 house. Uh, 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 uh. She's mighty, mighty. Le never mind. <laughs> okay. Almost hit, hit the drum very hard with the mic on. Yeah. 